First of all, we will talk about back. So, talking uh, about back before we should uh, discuss about the authority uh, which is dealing with the back. Uh, if I remove this one, so uh, the authority name was General Authority of Zakat and Tax. Why it name was uh, because now the name has been changed. And the new name is uh, Zakat Tax and Custom Authority, uh, which is in short form Zadka. So, what does Zadka do? Uh, implementation and administration of Zakat and taxes, re registration and deregistration of taxable persons, return, refund, undertaking audits, and field visits. And to the, their main important task is to penalize or to apply the penalties. Uh, to the taxpayers. So, uh, Zakat, VAT, withholding tax, income tax, excise tax, custom, contract service, and uh, now the invoicing. These are the projects or the type of uh, areas which Gazette is uh, dealing with the taxpayers. And uh, we are uh, paying all kind of taxes, uh, starting from Zakat, VAT, the car and income tax. Income tax is applied on foreign companies uh, because the local companies, the car is applicable. VAT, everybody know uh, because every end user is paying VAT on each and every product which they are using or purchasing. Withholding tax is uh, actually the tax on the uh, foreign payments. Uh, whatever payment uh, going outside the kingdom but related to services only. So the withhold index is applicable. Custom is paid on the ports uh, from where the shippings in the form of materials are coming. And then these are the other areas where uh, the car uh, gather department is dealing. Okay, now VAT. VAT actually it is indirect tax on all kind of goods and services and it, it starts from uh, raw material to end product. So every every step is uh, involved in, in that. Uh, earlier the rate was 5%, everybody know that in 2018, 1st January 2018, the VAT rate was, uh, the VAT was uh, implemented and then uh, the, the rate was 5% at that time and then lately in uh, 2020, July 1st, July 2021, 2020, 
it was 15 percent and there were some transitional rules uh, on that basis we were having calculation that the old projects were having 5 percent and the new projects were having 15 percent where now uh, taxpayers what taxpayer we are taxpayer as company as in real we are taxpayer what we do we collect that from the customers when we are doing some business activity and we pay pay that on the suppliers to the suppliers for example if something we are purchasing we are uh, paying that to our supplier and whenever we are selling something we are collecting but what we are doing these two things we are doing both steps on behalf of our uh, tax authority so we are paying to uh, the uh, to the supplier and he is collecting the VAT from us on the gazette behalf or Zepka department behalf and similarly what we are collecting is also we are keeping with us and paying to the authority so it is not an income it is just the collection on behalf of uh, the tax authority okay output VAT sale transition uh, sale transaction uh, any, uh, there are two types of VAT. One is output VAT and another one is input VAT. So whatever we are selling, uh, the marketing department and sales department, they know they are collecting VAT and that VAT is called output VAT. Because wh whatever we are selling, we are paying the VAT, uh, we are collecting the VAT, but it, it is actually in nature uh, to pay to the government. So that is output VAT. And uh, the other one is input VAT, which are which is applicable on the purchases, and that what we we pay to our suppliers. And uh, at the end, what we do, we we collect uh, VAT on sale and we pay VAT on purchases. And whenever we file our VAT return, we net of those payments, uh, paid VAT and the collected VAT, and net we pay to the uh, tax authority. taxable person who is taxable person if I ask uh, you this general question so anybody can be a taxable person it can be a company it can be a, uh, an individual but what could be the specification the specifications are a natural or legal person uh, any he should exist uh, carries own an economic activity he should have a business activity economic activity uh, for example if I am doing something for my own personal use or something I am do, doing uh, for my um, uh, any, anything for my personal use that, that is not taxable or valuable but anything I am I'm purchasing this water portal and I am drinking it it is that is applicable on it when I purchase it but I consumed it and I am the only and user who will pay the VAT on it but if something I am purchasing this portal and I am selling to uh, another person say Mr. Rizwan so I have paid VAT to my supplier and meanwhile I have transferred that my, my cost to my customer so ultimately if he is drinking that water whatever VAT I have paid here I will collect from him so he will be the end user who is drinking the water and paying the VAT on it. So this is the, the uh, economic activity. Economic activity means I have uh, uh, purchased and I have sold. If I am just purchasing and utilizing that is not economic activity that is personal or end user uh, activity. Registered required to be registered for VAT. Uh, that there, there are some criteria which we will uh, discuss later that who uh, is uh, eligible for uh, registration of VAT annual turnover ex exceed the man mandatory threshold so here we, we have uh, uh, mentioned uh, separately mandatory registration for KSA resident taxable supplies over 12 months uh, and it should exceed 365,000 this is this is the threshold uh, by the tax authority that a person who is carrying economic activities more than 12 months 
and his turnover is more than 365,000. So he should mandatorily register himself with the authority. If he is not registering himself, it means he is. Uh, uh, it, it means he is. Um, uh, I think he is violating the law. Violating the law. Violating the law. Uh, voluntarily registration for PSA resident is uh, if somebody is doing some activity, but it is not. Uh, it is more than twelve months activity, but. You know the the value is not exceeding or it is just one eighty seven thousand five hundred. This is the the two figures given by the tax authority that if one person is only reaching to this level, so it is just the uh, 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 voluntarily he can register himself. Provided that, that president is involved in some commercial activity, right? Yeah, this is this is, uh, this is registration is only required for commercial activity. activity. Yeah, because okay. if, if there is an ex exactly, uh, yeah, if somebody has an income of hundred and eighty seven thousand five hundred plus, but is not, not income. Uh, uh, any a job person cannot register. A salaried himself. person cannot. Salary person cannot register himself. Uh, but this is uh, the economic activity over twelve months, and uh, what is the benefit of registering with that? Why why Voluntarily, anybody go to register himself. Uh, you know, every person is purchasing something, and if he is selling with the value of one eighty seven thousand five hundred, it means he is selling. He is purchasing something. But if he is not registered with VAT, he cannot claim his VAT what he has paid to the suppliers. So this will give him benefit to voluntarily get registered himself, that he can collect whatever he has paid. So in the end, in the end being. So yeah, uh, exactly, you know, exactly. and then you are saving your VAT cost. Yeah. Otherwise, if you are below and you are not registering yourself, whatever you have paid is lost. Okay. So here the, the benefit here comes. I'm sorry. Okay, now basic VAT obligation on taxpayer. Uh, the, the registration, charging VAT on sale, issuing invoices, deducting VAT on purchasing. Filing VAT return, returns and dealing with Zapka department. These are the basic functions when one is registered with VAT, so these things need to comply uh, on monthly or quarterly or yearly basis. As in, then uh, normally it is monthly and quarterly. So uh, these are the uh, basic obligations. Is that a certification that has an expiration date or expiration timeline, limitation, validation? VAT certificate. Mm -hmm. VAT certificate is actually uh, it is issued when one is getting registered with the VAT authority. But it has no expiration limit or revalidation or something. Uh, it is uh, if status is changed, then it can be revalidated and reissued. But normally, when once it is issued, it is uh, on ongoing. So it's not a new every year. No, it is no. It is unlike uh, the zakat and income. Zakat yeah. certificate is every year renewed. Uh, until and unless you pay and clear all the dues yeah, for the card and income tax, but VAT is uh, it is on the time of uh, registration. It's not one time. One time. Clients is asking us expiration date. We keep telling them that there's no expiration date. Oh, until the business is working, it is not expired. Who is asking this? Oh, sorry, clients. You know, there is uh, one uh, portal on the Gazette website. Uh, we can enter VAT number and we can verify it is working or not. So, if somebody asks you about the VAT certificate validation, ask them to check on go Gazette portal. The problem is they not accept us because they have to add an state so they can accept. No, it sure, can be sent from our side in, a, in an email. I keep giving uh, them that 2050. <laughs> <laughs> Hope oh, the business works in that. Uh, hopefully, the wife is working Okay. So, value added tax uh, suppliers on which VAT is charged and suppliers on which VAT is not charged. Uh, normally, on all suppliers, 15% VAT is applicable nowadays, but previously it was 5%, and now it is 15% almost on everything. Some things are uh, at zero rated and some may be exempted, but we will discuss on it. 
zero rated uh, on which things uh, the bad zero rated bad is applicable uh, number one is the export of goods if anything we are exporting outside the kingdom services supply to non gcc resident uh, currently gcc resident are also at the same status because uh, the authorities are waiting uh, for the signing of uh, the agreement between uh, all gcc countries but still uh, they are not uh, the, the agreement is not yet signed so gcc and non gcc are currently at the same status but this law is applicable only for gcc non gcc uh, like you can mention the name other than gcc country pakistan uk us and india other country but dubai kuwait uh, oman these countries are under gcc but still the agreement is not signed we can apply this rule as well on them uh, international goods and passenger transport service international goods for example uh, the passenger transport service uh, international air tickets there is no vat on uh, tickets no oh. supply of transport qualifying medicine and qualifying medical goods this is uh, the exemption or the facility given by the uh, government of saudi arabia the some medical uh, me some medicines and medical equipments are uh, zero rated zero rated is not mean exam zero rated mean bad at zero percent but it doesn't mean that it is exempt or it is in the exemption list so it is just the bad rate is zero percent five percent and fifteen percent so zero percent rate is applied on it health services health yes medicine some medicines and equipment uh, medical equipment the first supply or supply for investment of qualifying metals uh, gold silver or platinum means if somebody is uh, investment uh, doing investment in these uh, items to qualify for the import or export purpose yani for business activity so first transaction is uh, uh, zero rated okay uh, supplies of eligible used goods where our vat is calculated using the profit margin vat is borne by ksa government qualifying supplies of healthcare education and purchase of first home for saudi citizen uh, this is important uh, education is also uh, vat uh, uh, because saudi ksa government is bearing the vat uh, qualifying healthcare which i mentioned above some medicine and some medical equipment uh so the government is bearing the bad and the first home for saudi citizen if he purchase if he is purchasing first home uh, the bad is not applicable but if he is renting out so on rent it is available uh, that rate is applicable okay the supplies on which no bad is charged supplies not carried out as part of an economic business activity for example i mentioned the jobs and other personal activities bad exempt supplies financial services means the investment banks uh, investment services where consideration is charged as an implicit margin uh, the issue or transfer of a debt security or equity security the issue of life insurance policy the gli uh, life insurance policy renting of qualifying residential uh, real estate uh, the issue or supply of a qualifying voucher uh, supplies of goods and services from one member to a, a bad group supplies made by branch of a taxable person in a country outside the okay this is what we are in saudi arabia we have one branch outside uh, for example in uk and it is working so tax is no that is not applicable on that branch because that country law will applicable on uh, on it it is actually uh, the even even uh, receiving the cash from the, the that branch will not be applicable value added tax which supplies are made in ksa for bad purpose okay this is actually place and supply of good rule uh here we check for example uh, without transportation transportation and with transportation means uh i have one showroom of cars 
and somebody oh. comes at showroom pay the money and take the car so he is at this point he is taking the goods without transportation and uh, the customer disposal point is the data, the place of supply of that good we are identifying the place of supply okay in other way other case uh, we are in uh, showroom and somebody has paid online for the car and uh, we have to deliver it from our uh, say our showroom is in Dhamam but we have to pay uh, we have to deliver that vehicle from Riyadh to Jeddah uh, client office uh, our warehouse is in Dhamam and our uh, uh, customer client and user is in Jeddah so the the place of supply will be from Riyadh from where the the good has been uh, delivered, not purchase, purchase in the mom, but delivered through uh, from the warehouse in Riyadh. So Riyadh will be the place of supply, place of supply of service. That was for good physical uh, identifiable good. Good hair, but the service was there from Riyadh itself. So right. But it was it from from the mom, but it's been delivered from the from the store or the shop. Exactly. The so the place of supply will be that place where from where it, it, it actually. Where, where it is sold. So, one question here. Uh, let's say we are supplying some equipment. It's working? Okay. Uh, we are supplying some equipment to a client. Okay. The client is in, let's say, Jada. Mm -hmm. And we are doing it in our workshop. We fabricate a heat exchanger. It's value is 100,000. Okay. This price of 100,000 includes transportation cost for the equipment to Jada. Okay. The client will issue a fee of 100,000, including transportation. But you are here, you are saying that transportation cost is not uh, bad applicable, right? Bad is not applicable on the cost of transportation, right? Where I said. Okay, so the transportation cost will also be uh, applicable. Yeah, I did not say about transportation okay. cost. Okay. I said the transportation involved in the process. Okay. Where the transportation is involved, so in this case, mm -hmm. the transportation was between the Asu, Jeddah. And from Jeddah, that is the place of supply. We are just identifying here the place. Okay, okay. So, but earlier on you told something about transportation services are exempt from. No, transportation is also a kind of service. Uh, okay, okay, it is. It is yes. International, international okay. transport. Okay, Only international okay. Yes, not local. Okay, this is uh, a, a test or we can say the, the, the test to, to check the criteria of applica application of VAT. Is the supplier registered for KSA VAT? We need to check first if it is required or no. First thing, if it is not required then no VAT chargeable. But if it is required, so next question is, is supply of good or service? Okay, if we say that uh, is a supply of good or service made, any activity done or no, any business activity done or no, if no, then why that will be charged? If yes, then is any monetary or non-monetary consideration payable for the supply? If no, then definitely no uh, charge, bad chargeable, but if yes, then is the supply taxable? or variable we have discussed earlier that some are zero rated some may be exempt like education or uh, the healthcare activities so is it applicable or no if no then again no no chargeable but if yes then again the main important thing is is the place of supply of good or services in KSA that what we were trying to uh, In, in previous slide, we were uh, uh, trying to analyze that the place of supply is important. If place of supply is within the territory of KSA, then VAT is applicable. But if outside KSA, some, something is coming, so definitely that country rule may apply, but VAT is not applicable on that. Uh, on, on While that product or good is coming through border, uh, so then custom uh, is applicable on that and uh, on the service of that portion the VAT is very minimal amount of service uh, custom department service 
the bad is only uh, applicable which is within the territory of ksa but on that product or cost of that product the bad is not overall applicable so in other words if we getting services outside saudi arabia it, it it is not like that where will be applied and customers will be applied so one, of, one of them will be one of one of them uh, always the taxation is uh, it cannot be multiple taxes in 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 this relaxation form that one of the tax is applied on one thing uh, we will discuss this in with or index as well yes. so if if there are there are, there is another type of with, with or index so if somewhere we are paying uh, custom or vat then with or index is, and that is due yeah. to nature of that activity because, uh, in case of customs we are getting some material into the kingdom exactly so but if we are getting some services outside the kingdom then in this case we are paying without index without index yes uh, because if service could be physically identifiable and it come through border uh -huh. and custom department so custom definitely yeah. take the uh, bad or custom on that mm -hmm. but service is not identifiable mm -hmm. and it is just floating between the country so the department we will discuss in detail later but department has made a rule that whenever we pay on uh, that service to any non resident any 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 payment which is made outside ksa so with all tax is applicable on that we will discuss it in detail in later stage is vat is zero rated which i mentioned earlier is zero rated then vat will be charged as zero and if there is uh, no zero rated then 5% and later on now it is 15% will be applicable on that okay calculating vat it is simple calculation uh, everybody know about that and uh, just i will explain applying vat on to a vat exclusive okay uh, there are two types of uh, figures one is uh, exclusive vat and other one is uh, inclusive vat you may heard about everybody so exclusive of vat means the vat is not added in that amount for example i have uh, to pay for 1000 riyal and i ask uh, the other guy it is inclusive of vat or exclusive of vat so he say in exclusive it means i have to pay 1000 plus additional vat so what will be the value uh, formula uh, and the vat value of supply multiplied by the vat percentage so vat percentage will come or the vat amount will come and will be clubbed with the original amount and if somebody say that we uh, you have to pay 1000 but it is inclusive of vat it means vat is already added in that so you have to uh, pay 1000 which is uh, some portion of uh, uh, the value of uh, supply plus the vat portion added already in that 1000 so total consideration received we can how we can calculate the vat amount in that we will divide that amount uh, with 115 which is now 100 plus 15 is percentage of vat uh, 15% so we will divide that amount with 115 and multiply by 15% rate uh, which is vat so vat amount will uh, be calculated here we have a 2 in the end here that is the square no this is for uh, 100 zeros multiply by 100 Two zeros. This one two zero or it is square? No, it is not square. Ah. It is if you calculate or if you allow me to calculate if y y go. So for example, uh, I have one thousand. Mm -hmm. It is inclusive of that. Mm -hmm. But I will do. I will divide it with the. Okay, let me make it on Excel. Just to explain it. so i have 1000 which is inclusive of that so what i will do i will divide it by 115 because this value is which was having 100% of value of supply plus 15% of that so i will divide it with, with the 115 simply and then i will multiply it with the 15% so this is 
इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल सो इट विल बी मल्टीप्लाई विथ टू जीरो यानी हंड्रेड देन इट विल कम थर्टीन डे आर सो दैट टू मीन्स दैट हंड्रेड वन थर्टी डे आर इज एडेड इन दी टैक्स सो इफ यू सी दिस टू मीन्स विल मल्टीप्लाई विथ इन हंड्रेड टू जीरो Uh, one question yeah. is so let's say if it's one thousand real in bad inclusive so that means automatically it should be one fifty real is bad right or no if so if one thousand uh, uh, it is not appearing here sorry yeah so the actual value okay, is okay. Oh, I can share this thing I thought they are able to see it so bad inclusive value will be nine seventy plus one thirty will be bad so just let me explain with this example if it is not appearing here. It is coming one thirty here as a value. Yeah, one one thirty. But for all. Okay. I think this two is not equal. We added here, and it, it's actually coming one thirty. Just multiplying by no, ten by one hundred five. Okay. Yeah. I will show you. This one thousand is inclusive of that. Okay. Okay, but I did here just divided this one thousand with the one hundred fifteen. Yeah, it is giving me the the value of uh, where. Okay, when I multiply this, with the fifteen percent, you can see where the. the if you can directly multiply by fifteen or one hundred five, you get the value. Directly, if you multiply the VAT inclusive value with one one five, fifteen by one one five, you get the value. Okay. See, is equal fifteen divided by one one five. Yeah. Is one percent multiplied by one thousand. So one thirty is the yeah VAT uh, amount. Yeah. So if okay. you minus this one thousand, you get the VAT inclusive amount. Exactly. This is. This eight sixty nine is without VAT. The value of your uh, supply, uh, the good or service, and then one thirty is VAT. When does the VAT charge arise? Date of supply take place. Date of supply means. When actually that product is delivered, or when actually that service is rendered, so that due date is date of supply, date of tax invoice issuance. Okay, these are the three criteria which tax authorities have given us to identify the point when we have to pay the VAT. Because it is not simply the uh, normal transaction that we are just doing one single activity or simple activity, and we have to pay VAT. Businesses are in very complex nature as well, so there are many guidelines. Uh, now the we have to identify one of the uh, situation: date of supply is done, date of tax invoice issuance, receipt of partial or full of the amount, uh, any advance payment. So whichever comes first, the VAT is applicable. If we receive some advance payment, we have to pay VAT on that advance payment to the tax authority. In the month when we are getting that advance, actual date of supply and earlier date of supply. Tax invoice issued before supply actual date. Advance payment is made. This is again the the explanation of that. Uh, date of issue of tax invoice VAT must be reported as output tax in the period in which the tax invoice is issued or in the period in which the advance payment is received. Income which is not subject to VAT is dividend income, freely given items or gifts, uh, true compensation payments means some compensatory payments or some penalties or some kind of uh, you know you pay some compensation on behalf of other. So these payment wages, salaries, and other payments received under a contract of employment. These are right now or time being. Uh, exempted from that. Yes, you mean it will be taxable later. That's why I'm smiling. Ah, I think it may. 
but timing it is not saying the plan so we know that so, so what, what will be the company strategy i mean you are saying where the company is also you know claiming that where to that will be paid by the company or by employee profit which one if it is a fixed plan that is Uh, no, it, 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 then the the tax authority will explain the law. Uh, what will be the mechanism? Because uh, everything uh, is regulated by tax authorities. If if it uh, it would be really uh, bearable, then um, nobody can. Yeah, most resist. probably in this case, most probably it is not there. We are just supposing that normally in case of salary, if there is a tax, the person who is giving the salary. He deducts the tax and submits it to the tax authority. This has happened every year, but at the moment there is no such thing. So don't assume things at the moment. <laughs> We can discuss over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Doesn't happen. Issue? Huh? The sober doesn't take this long. No, no, no. Issuing invoices uh, when before that supply take place? How the standard? Okay. Uh, here are the standard uh, tax invoice uh, requirement, basic requirement which need to be met, and there there is another the simplified tax invoice which I will explain what is actually simplified invoice. Uh, taxable and zero duty supplies should be more than one thousand real made to a taxable person. Export of goods, intra GCC supplies. Supplies of eligible used goods, nominal supplies. For these, tax standard tax uh, tax invoice should be prepared. And simplified invoices are the invoices uh, you can see on uh, bakalas, uh, petrol stations, uh, restaurants. So uh, less than one thousand value tax or supplies made to a Taxable person other than the export of goods. So uh, explain the the examples with the uh, restaurant vouchers and uh, the invoices and bakalas, panda, wherever you go. So you find the invoices. Those are simplified invoices uh, with the minimum requirement. Okay. Uh, issuing invoice requirement, the basic requirement and the most important requirement is the invoice should be in Arabic. english is the second language any other language can be the second language but the first language is arabic so invoice should be in arabic and it should be submitted in the required format and with the required information so these are the basic required information which is invoice date supply date should be mentioned sequential numbering should be there which is a big issue uh, supplier information name address number customer information quantity and nature of the supplier of good whatever you are selling uh, or uh, even it is service or good you have to mention in description that what kind of service or nature of service you are uh, selling the vat exclusive taxable amount means without vat you have to mention the amount first and then uh, the vat amount and then gross amount so unit price including vat any discounts or rebate should be separately mentioned the rates of tax applied How much percentage of rate is applied? Zero percent, five or fifteen. You have to specifically mention on the invoice page the amount of tax payable in SAR. Uh, the basic and import uh, the uh, the required currency is SAR, Saudi Arabian real. Other any currency can be changed or interchanged later on. The simplified invoice only invoice date, name of the name address, tax number of the supplier. uh you don't see uh, when whenever you purchase something from panda you see the panda logo there panda name there but you don't have your name on that so this is minimum requirement to have here you have both information of customer and supplier but here you just need the supplier information description of goods or services you find each and everything on that the consideration payable the tax payable amount and uh, the vat uh, without vat it may include additional information as and when required or uh, uh, customized information but this this is the minimum requirement now claiming input vat on purchase is right to deduct input vat okay 
on all suppliers we can uh, we, where we are paying the VAT to the supplier we can deduct the VAT from uh, the VAT payable to the tax authority until uh, uh, the requirement is we are tax registered VAT registered but three things where we cannot claim the VAT one is uh, the goods or supplies purchase of personal use we are end user so we cannot claim it we are utilizing the thing uh, ultimately from raw material to end product the VAT is shifting from first step to each and every step to the end user so it is burden on the end user certain goods and services outside the economic activity prohibited goods for sale under the KSLR simple to understand restrictive motor vehicles uh, restricted motor vehicles means the motor vehicles which are uh, not for business activity for personal use if you are purchasing or uh, utilizing the any anything for personal use that will not be uh, claimable so let's say company buys a car for exactly. manager for exactly. manager it's bad you have to pay it you're not going to claim it Yes, yes, this is very uh, and normally uh, Gazet is very interested to do audit on this uh, if, area. If some vehicle is purchased for a specific work order? Yeah, if it is involved for business activity then VAT is claimable. Uh, so for this purpose we have to or business have to very clearly identify uh, the, uh, the vehicles or the equipment which is used for business purpose and for individual purpose anything used for individual uh, or end user purpose even for example the catering services we are uh, consuming as an end user even uh, if it is for business activity fine but anything we are using for personal use or we are using as an end user so we cannot claim for example electricity bill paying paid for this uh, office it is for business activity so we can claim this electricity, but at home we cannot claim the VAT on it. So uh, okay, penalty is uh, the the most favorite from mm -hmm. gadget side or uh, the tax authority side. Uh, there are penalty on each and everything. So uh, any business has to be very careful on VAT, all kind of taxes. Uh, just. To give you the brief idea about what kind of uh, uh, penalties could be submitting false document with the intent of evading the payment of the VAT due or reducing its value. So, if you submit false document, at least the amount of VAT due or up to three times of value of the goods or services, the penalty will be applicable. If you just simply submit the false document and the audit uh, the the tax authorities auditors come and they find it and then simply they will apply the penalty on moving goods in or out kingdom without paying the VAT due anything you are not notifying to the authority how much again the VAT due this is the minimum thing or up to the three times of value of goods or services for example if you have one million real item you are moving so VAT is maybe 1.500,000 on that, but if you are not, so so three times mean three millions you are paying uh, as penalty. It is up to the discretion of the auditing officer or the auditing authority to apply Depends upon the intention uh, and the activity found. Um, if it is, uh, uh, you are you are complying with everything and something is by chance missed or skipped and uh, still you are willing to pay then maybe the minimum penalty but if you are intentionally doing it and they found it then uh, it could go up failure to register for VAT in the allotted time frame 10,000 real penalty is that uh, for that uh, means if you, your threshold is increased from 375,000 above and you are sitting and not registering yourself with VAT now it is mandatory and 10,000 will be applicable on that uh, penalty. Uh, filing incorrect tax returns, amend a tax return after submission or filing uh, equal to 50% of the value of the difference between the calculated and tax due. So if you have submitted one month uh, tax return by uh, bad return and you found it that you, you need to change something, so they will calculate the penalty 50% uh, of the difference. Uh, failure to file 
they had return in time again 5 to 25 percent uh, failure to pay VAT in time 5 percent penalty uh, of the VAT due for each month every month until you pay it pay the amount of VAT plus 5 percent of the VAT due every month calculate that amount and then pay all together then you will be free collecting VAT without being registered this is big uh, uh, exactly up to 100,000 yeah, you, you are not registered VAT registered but you are collecting and you are considered it, yeah, keeping in your pocket it is your uh, other income uh, so uh, tax authority will penalize 100,000 Failure to maintain books and records as stipulated in the regulation up to 50,000. Uh, authority has given the time, uh, the guidelines on how to maintain the books, uh, how to maintain the record and data and all things should be available. That's why we emphasize every relevant team to keep the, the documents uh, in the folder and physical. Uh, and then uh, the, the reporting as well should be uh, as per the requirement. Preventing gathered employees from performing their duties if somebody or if somebody from the gathered department has some requirement and we are not helping or uh, providing this required data so up to 50,000 uh, on, on that activity. Violating any other provision of VAT is 50,000 so these are the penalties and VAT session is ended with this. Thank you. Can you have some questions? Sure, sure. Why not? Okay. Uh, we have other section uh, sessions as well after that with old tech, uh, capex, and uh, the invoicing. So accordingly, we can. This is a small question. Yeah, sure. Please. Okay. So earlier on, we mentioned that the VAT is applicable at uh, the, the situation at which I mean the time of application of VAT. We mentioned one was at the time of the of the goods or services. One was at the time of invoicing. And one more at the time of collection of payment for that particular. Whichever come first. Whichever come first. So let's say we have an equipment here fabricated in our workshop and it is being supplied to let's say Ramco or Saudi or whatever. We will raise an invoice for that, okay, including that, but that payment will come after some time. That payment will not come immediately, right? So after the delivery is made, we, that, that means this is the first point of VAT payment. So we have to pay VAT from all the all, all pockets before we receive the payment. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So let me explain your question. You are asking that you have uh, uh, manufactured one product yeah. and you have delivered it to the client, yes. right? Yes. So your date of supply is the, the date when you have delivered it to the client. Yes. Okay. You will pay VAT from your own pocket. Once you submit the invoice, uh, or maybe at the same time you have submitted the invoice, once you receive the invoice, even if it is uh, the payment if you receive in two months, six months, one year, so you you collect the amount from customer and you can uh, uh, cover your uh, whatever you paid uh, earlier. But authority, you have to, to, to the tax authority, you have to pay at the same time. In advance, and, and that payment will be actually, uh, let's say, if uh, an equipment be sold for one million. This is what this is what we emphasize to collect the receivable as well, because you know our receivable is stuck as well as we have paid the tax authorities in advance. Mm -hmm. So our two types of payments are stuck uh, in in form of receivable. Mm -hmm. So yes, your concern is right. We pay in advance to the authorities and we wait for our collection. So there is a cash flow gap as well. So there must be. 20 to 25% advance on your. <laughs> 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 you always ask for advance, but in some cases, the client has a strict payment term. Yeah. They say we pay 60 days after delivery. That's all. But, but, but most but of the deals, we are asking some of the percentage of advance. But tax authority says that it is your responsibility to pay at the time of. But the the whatever we have paid for suppliers, we submit the invoices for that VAT, and minus that amount, we pay the remaining VAT at that time. Right. Actually, for, for a million VAT products, mm -hmm. our total VAT was 150,000. Okay. And uh, all yeah. of which we paid 50,000 to our suppliers. So okay. for that 50,000, we will submit the invoices and 100,000 will pay from our own pocket. That's what I'm thinking, right? Yes, yes, yes. 
uh, if you collect the, from your uh, suppliers, yeah, if you if you pay, you already paid fifty thousand dollars suppliers for making that product. Okay, so you mean you uh, half of the portion you collected from your supplier in terms of input bag? No, 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 output bag. I'm talking about we bought plates or whatever. Let's say. So you are purchasing. Yes. Purchasing means you are paying back to them. Yeah. And then you can collect whenever you receive that invoice. Yes, exactly. On the booking of that invoice, mm -hmm. in, in 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 which month that invoice is booked? Maybe you have booked it uh, same time when you received the invoice. Maybe it is booked. I'm talking about ideal uh, situation. So whenever you received in the month, the, that that input is claimed from the tax authority. So it's month to month. Yes. Okay, now our another topic is if anybody want uh, some break of two or five minutes or we, we should continue. Okay. Uh, the second taxation type is withholding tax. Withholding tax is uh, actually an income tax assessed on a non resident who generates income from a source in KSA. In, in simple words, if somebody from outside kingdom is providing us services in Saudi Arabia, so that is applicable. Uh, withholding tax is applicable, but at the time of payment only. For example, I I I am sitting. Uh, our company is in Saudi Arabia, and we are taking some services from one company from Pakistan or UK or America or India or any other country, and that service is not coming through border. It is it is not the physically identifiable item. If anything or any product or material coming through border, then custom is custom uh, is custom clearance department is involved. But if service is uh, there, so uh, how we can collect the the VAT, uh, the tax on that? Uh, you know that company is sitting outside Saudi Arabia and they are earning the business from Saudi Arabia. So how the this tax authority will get benefit from that transaction? So it is the responsibility given to the resident company, the company which is in Saudi Arabia, that they will withhold the tax. That's why its name is withholding tax. They will withhold the tax on behalf of tax authority from that external or foreign vendor, and they will deduct from their invoice amount, and they will pay to the tax authority. Clear or anything need to explain more? I mean, let's say we buy a software. Like exactly. So we buy a software license. Yes, yes. yes. In that case, how is it applicable? Like, let's so whatever say, payment we are paying to them, yeah. even uh, we have purchased the software, mm -hmm. but we are paying that that is for example one million real, but we are paying for two hundred real monthly. So whenever we will pay two hundred real monthly, well, or whenever we will pay the payment on that payment, we will deduct. It, it is not on the transaction or the. A processing of an invoice, mm -hmm. mainly. When the invoice is processed? No, no, not invoice, it is linked with the payment. Payment, payment. Any invoice can be booked uh, in the system in January 2021, mm -hmm. but if the payment is done in June 2021, mm -hmm. so that withholding tax will be applied and deducted at the time of payment in June, mm -hmm. not the linked with the invoice. So, and what's the rate for that? There are different rates, there mm -hmm. are different types of services. And each service has its own rate. Uh, 5 to 15 percent. Yeah. Uh, uh, this chart saying that non resident is outside kingdom and resident is inside kingdom. So, the same what I explained. Uh, it is taxpayer responsibility to deduct or uh, withhold the tax and to pay to the tax authorities. The withholding agent, the resident company's withholding agent, the resident person or permanent establishment. Okay, the non-resident. The non-resident is uh, who is driving the income from a source in the KSA. Any outside foreign vendor uh, who is getting business from Saudi Arabia is non-resident party and payment subject to withholding tax. Any payment that is made from resident in KSA to a non-resident from a source in KSA. Any any payment from Saudi company 
to foreign vendor that payment if related to business service activity not only not material so it, it, if service activity is involved and we same you mentioned it service we have taken purchase the uh, software or, the or any consultancy or in our case sometimes we do some uh, like say uh, special design study from yeah. outside the country exactly so so on on those services whenever we will pay we will uh, withhold the even the tax even on royalty branding yeah royalty management fees as well there are many types the those types will be discussed later what are the payments that are subject to withholding tax payment to a non resident uh, payment from a source in case from a resident or permanent okay payment from business activities in the kingdom income from sale okay these these are the sources of income uh, what kind of sources of income uh, business uh, payment from business activities in income from sale or disposal of immovable property gain from disposal of share lease of movable properties in kingdom dividend management and director fees services rendered services performed in kingdom income attributed to a permanent establishment permanent establishment is uh, this is also an important concept but uh, we will discuss in later detail if any foreign company who is uh, their own operation and business in outside saudi arabia but they are working in saudi arabia since long means uh, the tax authority has given that 6 month period that is any any company is having continuous more than 6 month business in saudi arabia so that will be considered as permanent permanent establishment mean the cloud cloud based company in saudi arabia so they will they will so, ask them to do the registration in saudi or they cloud them so it's just no then they they wish to apply the the local laws so this is why they are they are uh, asking the permanent establishment concept this uh, there is one category of company let's say some foreign company is doing business but they have local presence under saudi okay they also have to pay some kind of tax so they have service they have to pay income tax They with the corporate pay, income tax yeah, but that is separate from without tax on on those services if their presence is here under saudi we don't have to pay without tax you you need to pay net on that Yeah, then local uh, taxation will be applied local law will be applied applied because you are uh, you will be treated as the local uh, there will be yes yeah they the will local be paying income tax because they are income tax so okay uh, here are some type of uh, uh, categories return on loans insurance re reinsurance premium technical services operation and branches immovable property sales of goods and merchandise contract contract of delivery of goods to kingdom we will uh, this uh, type of services we will discuss in detail uh, in next slides uh, okay the, there are this is also flow chart which is simply uh, if i explain in simple words so we have to identify first withholding tax is applicable or not first criteria is are we getting from our foreign vendor the goods or service if it is goods no withholding tax applicable if it is service any type of services there are different type of services accordingly the rate will be applicable so this table more mainly says that and these are the types of services uh and these are the rates type of okay there are two two types of foreign companies one is the normal foreign company which where we don't have any link the other one is the foreign company where we have link means we have the the partnership or share holding or uh, the controlling uh, authority in that company or that company has the authority vice versa like so that, then then that is like that's what is asked exactly the partner that's yeah. from pakistan so uh, in that uh, area uh, th- that company is called related party and uh, the other normal foreign vendors are called uh, non related 
uh, even related uh, party is uh, within the Saudi Arabia as well, I inside the Saudi Arabia. It, it is the connection. Uh, if same like Olean Group, all companies are related parties. Uh, or uh, if, uh, for example, Olean has 50, uh, more than 50 percent, any company has more than 50 percent share in other company, so they are related parties. Uh, Non-related parties, non-resident means the uh, the any, normal any, any other members. So the management fees percentage of the rent tax is twenty percent in both cases. The types of services are management fees, royalties, fifteen percent dividend distribution to the partners. Mm -hmm. Still five percent uh, with rent tax is applicable. If any payment against the dividend paid to non-resident. Uh, or outside the Saudi Arabia partner, 5% is deducted. Rent, 5%. Return on loans, 5%. Insurance, technical services, 5%. But here it, it differs with, between the related and non related. If you are taking the technical services and consultancy services from your related party, but that party is foreign party, so the rate will be 15%. But if it is normal, any unknown uh, foreign vendor, then it is 5%. Air tickets and air sea, freight 5%. Uh, international telecommunication services 5%. And related party rate is 15%. Inside kingdom, in kingdom land transportation 15%. Any other payment. Any other payment means any other services which is not mentioned in this list. This is the mentioned list and mentioned type of services. Any other which is not covered in, in, in this list will be 15% straight away. This is any else. Exactly. Exemption and reduction. A dividend distribution by a company which are engaged in natural gas, investment, oil, hydrocarbons. These are uh, exempted. Uh, any, any, Anybody outside the Saudi Arabia is investing in Ramco, so so their dividend will be exempted with, from the old tax. Uh, I'm, I'm just mentioning the name of Ramco, but any uh, company who is uh, invest has invested in oil, hydrocarbons, and gas investment. So this is encouragement for the foreign investment by the tax authority. There are purposes behind all these taxes. So if you are exempting something, there is some. Purpose. But by natural gas, oil and hydrocarbons, we only need around gold, Saudi Arabia. So, <laughs> <they're more> <laughs> <laughs> that's why I named it. Uh, withholding filing and payment, the withholding agent fi files and pay the amount withheld within the first 10 days of the following month of the month of payment to the beneficiary. Uh, normally, uh, the concept says that, uh, for example, if I am in January, uh, I have done some transaction and on that transaction, uh, withholding tax is applicable. So as per these lines, we have to pay in 10th before 10th of February. But normally, Gazette is giving some flexibility and uh, the overall flexibility period is 40 days. Uh, it means we can pay the withholding tax uh, due in the January. We can pay it before 10th of March. So the rule applies that following the month of uh, following the month of the May, month of payment. Fines. Submitting false book, books, records, accounts, same. Filing declaration based on unavailability of books or record. Filing forged or fictitious invoices or documents. Not declaring one or more taxable activities, destroying or hiding books or records. So uh, if, if you do these illegal activities, tax will be the, uh, the penalties will be applicable. Thank you very much. This is uh, the second session ended. Uh, and we have the third session of capex lease versus by decision. Shall we start it or uh, we need some rest? Okay, continue. Please have water. Capex lease versus by decision. Okay, uh, best practice for IT fleet and equipment leasing program. Uh, okay, what is the Okay. Uh, okay. So, benefit of equipment leasing, many organizations lease rather than buy. Uh, 
much of the equipment they use to run their businesses uh, for example forklift trucks plane, planes to computer printers and medical equipment leases can be found almost everywhere in an organization there are several financial and strategic benefits in simple words these are the benefits cash flow management technology absorption budget expansion lower asset management uh, by the the keywords you can understand easily that we can manage our cash flow if we have uh, for example 1 million real in pocket and uh, we can utilize it in other operational activity rather than buying the 1 million or one machinery and keep it in uh, just comparing uh, giving the example but there are analysis on which basis we decide either we need to use our cash or we need to go by lease or we have to have another option case to case difference yeah uh, technology of solutions for example the it uh, champion is here uh, he can explain it better uh, every 3 years uh, i guess the technology usually change or maybe earlier so it is very uh, beneficial in that term if we don't buy the uh, it related equipment or uh, machinery and we go for lease so that uh, we just take the benefit from that product but we don't own that and we don't put the full amount uh, of investment budget expansion means again i told we can expand our budget by utilizing it in uh, by utilizing our available fund to another business activity or expand budget expansion mean actually for example if i have 1 million real and uh, i can buy only the, the things within the 1 million real but i if i think about the leasing opportunity so then it will open my budget expand open yani now the leasing company is gi- giving me the opportunity to buy uh, to take the any product only so i have now 1 million in my pocket which i can use anywhere and i i can lease anything on uh, the Financial security of the other com- uh, the leasing company. Lower asset management. If you you don't own your asset assets, so do you, you don't need to manage them in terms of repair and maintenance, in terms of insurances, in terms of their uh, uh, depreciation uh, expense and all these stuff. Some some capex fund. Some cases we have to do the maintenance. Like in vehicles. Uh, see the point is sometimes yeah that is term of lease yeah, yeah. that is we will discuss later that is the condition yeah. which we it depends on the type of uh, asset you are purchasing like if you are going to make a huge investment sometimes it's not easy like if if we are going to buy a 100 million real crane yes. so spending 100 million real 100 million is too much let, let us make it 10 million Ten million real. Ten million real is a lot of money. And if and we if we do it in one time, one time transaction, because we we set a capex. Till my cash flow. Yeah, it will it will hit my cash flow. But if we do it like on the lease, we'll be paying this in five years or maybe in seven years, depending. So it will not hurt the cash flow. This is the basic thing. Yes. So uh, this is actually the cash flow management. But but on the other hand, sometimes it happens. It's like the feeling like there is a small value item you no, can buy it for 3 okay. years yeah and you can use it for 5 years but in case of lease you are paying more and you are using it less sometimes there is a difference in lease and rent so yeah. maybe we can yeah uh, rent is normally uh, you are paying the uh, rental cost yeah. uh, and then in that case for us in that case we whatever you put we rent they are doing the rent and everything not exactly In case for, of rent, yes. For for uh, for it, it, it depends on your contract. Yes, yes, again. And uh, one more thing, the difference between lease and rent is, once the lease expires, you can own that thing. Yeah, the asset is yours. The asset but is rent. But, but now, after, if you have rental an item for five years, even for after five years, this will be it will be taken back by the tenant. Okay. benefit of equipment leasing low asset management cost uh, many already recognize that ownership of certain assets and various costs associated with maintenance and repair falls outside the core competencies okay same uh, you have to 
manage them in all capacity you have to keep them uh, yeah. active for business yeah. so definitely there is a cost so lower management cost if you have low lower is report for you technology obsolescence is a big challenge especially in it related uh, products uh, equipment so uh, in if you purchase and after 3 years it is a crap but if you lease then after 3 years you can replace it so this is the big benefit capex lease what's the advantage what what is that mean by capex lease capex lease means capex capital expenditure when the same uh on if you do that capital expenditure on uh, leasing uh, option or uh, the buy option mm -hmm. so both are expenditure uh, you and leasing is not free mm -hmm. you are doing investment but uh, there are uh, different uh, yes. ideas uh, buy means you have to invest your all cap uh, capital expenditure even you depreciate it but you have to use your own and lease is uh, you have to take the leasing opp opportunity and not investing all uh, in once mm -hmm. leasing as a strategic tool corporate finance organizations should think about equipment finance and leasing as a strategic tool for the business in addition to optimizing the use of capital managing leasing program proactively can help management okay the purpose of uh, this uh, is that leasing uh, opportunity should be discussed and analyzed at as a strategic tool and at strategic level uh, you know uh, the the business every time it requires uh, the capital expenditure or it requires the uh, in investment in uh, the fixed assets where where you need you need to enhance your business activities where you have to increase your capabilities so each and every purchase you have to uh, analyze that either you should uh, use your own funds or uh, uh, you need to go for uh, leasing so there are many challenges related to leasing uh, if you go for uh the main bullet points are cost leakage from equipment leasing no competitive bidding on leasing leasing rates and on inconsistent lease and buy analysis if somebody is not uh, uh, or or you have not the solid basis of lease and buy analysis so that decision will be definitely uh, not correct if the information or data is not correct no competitive bidding on leasing rates means Uh, if you are uh, not having uh, suffici sufficient uh, uh, competitors in market to compare and you don't have many options so if you are stuck with one or two options you have to go then again it is a uh, challenge cost leakage from equipment leasing means uh, again if you are not properly analyzing and anything i i will give you one example for example if i have to i have to buy one crane for 1 million riyal and uh, i am doing the analysis by myself that if i go for leasing it is giving me around 6 to 7% uh, interest rate uh, which i am paying uh, extra but if i uh, and i don't have sufficient fund for example so uh, I, if if for example if i have sufficient fund so i have to decide whether i have to use i have any other option to use these funds or it will be idle if no then better to buy on our own funds if you have any other use of fund which is better than or which can give you the expansion of business or business activity can be enhanced so uh, better to use that fund in other operational or uh, uh, the business activity and decide between lease or any other option any other option mean there are loan option loan loan option available in the banks and usually that loan is lower than uh, around it is 3 to 4% uh, on the interest rate so then that comparison can help that whether we need to go for leasing actually or there is a, a, another source also uh, available uh, which can be cheaper than so Uh, there there are many types of analysis can and should be done before taking that decision
ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फंड बिजनेस एक्सपेंशन एंड कैपिटल थ्रू ए वरायटी ऑफ मैकेजम ऑपरेटिंग एट अर्निंग्स सेल ऑफ इक्विटी बोरिंग सिक्योर्ड फाइनेंस लीज वहीकल सच एज लीज मोस्ट mostly most of the company use a combination of these sources of liquidity how anybody can expand the cap, uh, the how can you get an cash exactly by these activities what is lease versus buy analysis see it is actually the comparison of two financing alternatives a lease scenario and a buy scenario lease is also a, a, an option and buy is also an option so you have to pick one of them in which asset is purchased by the company for most organization lease versus buy analysis is an important component of capital planning ifrs 16 is uh, financial accounting standard board and international uh, accounting standard board has issued ifrs 16 in early 2016 and uh, there are there were two types of leases uh, operational lease and uh, capital or finance lease so after this standard there has been a significant change in accounting rules such as changing do not significantly impact cash flow or leasing as a result these rules require according okay accordingly these rules require according lease assets and underlying liabilities on the balance sheet it means uh, this is actually purely finance related but uh, in in general or in summary i will explain that this standard accounting standard came and they it emphasized uh, on this uh, lease versus buy analysis Uh, more. Uh, this is exactly what we did when we were leasing those machines, right? Exactly. We are we are leasing the IT machines, so the photocopy machines, and then we were like doing the insurance for them on the side at first. Exactly. Actually, IFRS sixteen I have also seen in audit sheets. IFRS accounting. This is it is actually a accounting standard related to finance, but uh, because it is linked with. With this, so I I mentioned here, organization now focus the two economics of leasing. Okay. Basically, uh, uh, let me give you one example. What we have done this uh, of this year for the sixteen. Yes, please. Uh, three or four months ago, when we purchased some machines, eight Toshiba machines from Asia. The uh, these machines are under under a lease agreement for five years. Okay. In five in five year term we are supposed to pay a certain amount to the ABM or to the VC for five years. The machines are leased with them. This is not our asset because we have not purchased. So this is paid to rent. Yeah, this we have leased the machines, but on the on the other hand we have to cover certain risks. The risk of accidental loss in case of fire in case of any sort of accident. Then we talk to them and we ask them, okay, what is the buy or purchase value of these machines? Based on that value, we we capitalize those machines in our books. So we have registered them as our assets based on this standard, this uh, IFRS 16. They are registered as our assets, and simultaneously they are leased machines. By registering them as our asset, we cover the the risk of the insurance. Okay. We cover the risk of accident, like God forbid there is a earthquake or there is a fire, the machines got burned or damaged. Then we can the cover with the insurance. That was one of the things we had done. Okay. <coughs> there are three type steps for lease versus buy analysis. Lease structuring. Lease structuring is uh, the the thing which uh, was. Uh, Speaking out, uh, the first step is selecting the lease structure that best fits the asset. asset characteristic, the expected period of use, the financial objective of the lessee for the organization. Uh, for example, if we need one product, uh, this step requires familiarity with the available lease structures and expertise in matching lease structure with the specific pack, pack pattern and business objective. This is what he was explaining that we have to uh, decide the lease structure first. what kind of structure we need 
uh, what what are the asset characteristics what should be the useful life of that period and what are the financial objective we are we want to get from the uh, that product and uh, who will bear the risk and rewards uh, who will bear the risk and repair and maintenance cost so these are the structure which we decide accordingly the lease price exactly uh, whatever structure we choose accordingly the price will be decided so that is second step determining the market pricing of the optimal lease structure this step requires up to date market knowledge because published price index are generally unavailable market price market pricing is typically informed by compared compare so you need to be updated uh, on this uh, market price or uh, uh, the available options so that you can compare it <coughs> compare it better for example we have purchased the uh, these photocopier machines and we know that the market price of these equipment are uh, for example 100000 but even if we are getting it on lease we are getting it on 80000 for the useful life and we are getting the benefits as well we are not paying at all together and we are not paying even uh, the repair and maintenance cost it, even it is also shifted and still we are getting it at cheaper cost so these are the benefit structure and the pricing accordingly lease versus buy comparison the final step is comparing the lease scenario versus the buy scenario uh, typically through after tax net present value analysis this step requires specification of use uh, period less tax position and end of term disposition this is what uh, is saying end of term disposition at the end of the lease period either the lesser lesser is who is giving the product on lease he is taking back that product or we have to purchase it so there are this is another option which is decided in lease structure that at, at the end of the product normally if we are owner of that product we can resell it the same what we, we, we do uh, if the photocopier life uh, lease life is finished we resell it to the same company whatever the nominal value at that time the service value ah. exactly not uh, service value is the fair value which is maybe sometimes it is you can say the usable value okay. maybe uh, the usable no. value no, no that is scrap value and salvage value which is which is which is maybe for a for photocopy 1000 they are only mm -hmm. but if it is in proper use and it can be refurbished by the same company mm -hmm. uh, with very nominal cost maybe they will be repurchase it on 25000 okay, so that this is the difference uh, let me put it this way normally for the it uh, hardware we consider the useful life at three years mm -hmm. For three years means every year this item is depreciated at a cost of 33 percent yes. so after three years the book value of this item is zero or one real yes. so after three years its book value say yes. remains at one real or remains at zero it cannot be further depreciated yes. you have already recovered all the we, we have we have uh, the depreciation exactly. we have already and at this step yeah. this is end of term disposition yeah. At this time, we can resell it. Maybe yeah. uh, zero value item, we can resell it. Maybe ten thousand real. Yeah, because so this is the term. Again, we have to decide on the lease stretching stage. Even like in case of vehicles, vehicles are depreciated. Some vehicles are five years, some on seven years. <coughs> like big vehicles, like trucks and buses. After seven years, we can sell them in the open market at a market rate. And they might be the yeah, in one yeah, books and one day yeah, but plus or minus you can get it like say less than five thousand ten thousand then it's a profit yeah hmm. okay uh, so structuring leasing is a flexible tool that can provide cost effective financing or capital equipment and property lease structure differ with regards to several different factors one factor the end of term option and the transfer of residual risk the same we discussed and the risk control of tax ownership who is actually paying the, the taxation on, on that and the third is a party responsible for maintenance and operation who will be a repair and maintenance expense so these are the uh, factors which we can uh, discuss and uh, agree in the terms of lease structuring yani what kind, same uh, what kind of benefits you want accordingly you have to uh, 
you have 10 types of option you can select all 10 or 7 or 5 or whatever and accordingly the rate will be very by manipulating the key variable the lease structure can be tailored to match the specific organization circumstances and business objective or for each financing end of term option is asset may become surplus to the business need uh, of the lessee for a variety of reasons including technical obsolescence, changing business requirement, ordinary wear and tear. To protect against the risk of financial loss arising from the resale of the given asset, many organizations elect to transfer residual risk to a third party lesser that specialized in the asset type in question. This is again another risk coverage that for example uh, you make it in the term that we maybe we will not be able to resell it after the leasing contract and we will not get the proper but we may con contract that after uh, we may contract with another specialized who is, who is requiring this asset mm -hmm. for example uh, if uh, we have this uh, machine purchased from one company mm -hmm. but another company is also required this machinery at any uh, so we can make agreement with them as well uh, or we can do the agreement only normally, on this stage that normally it, it happens with the sum of the hardware it happens you buy the new hardware they show it like for four years or five years then they are renters in the market who are dealing with the refurbished equipment exactly so they they talk to you they buy the equipment refurbish it repair it and they sell it again so th these are the kind of services available so you can you may add that to your term as well okay controlling tax ownership Tax ownership can also be controlled through choice of lease structure. Again, whatever structure you decide, uh, often independently of the uh, because uh, the accounting ownership and tax ownership, uh, tax and accounting do different. Both are different. So placing tax ownership in the full tax paying uh, local, state, federal taxes may create a fundamental opportunity for the lessees with lower tax burden. Uh, for vast majority of the countries that have taxes that are different from accounting case should have no impact on the quantity. Okay, so uh, controlling the tax ownership is also uh, can be decided during the uh, this structuring uh, process. Okay, uh, impact on financial measures. A company should evaluate the impact of purchasing and leasing on their financial ratios and incorporate this analysis into the decision making process. Uh, financial measures. It should be noted that lease accounting standard views the significance of uh, uh, any ratio differences as all leases are on balance sheet ratio. Uh, balance sheet. Okay, there are two types of lease. One is operating lease and another one is finance lease. So accordingly, their analysis will be different. So this is what uh, the impact of financial measures that we choose the right measures to analyze the specific type of lease. Uh, for example, if we, we are doing one kind of lease and we are not choosing the right uh, analysis or the key characteristics, so it, it may give the wrong uh, decision, the wrong outcome and the decision could be the misleading. The outcome of seven should be selecting the lease structure that best fit the asset characteristic. Okay, the first step actually this was all the first step to uh, for for this structuring. So we have discussed this structuring that here we are uh, choosing the end of term options. We are controlling tax ownership choosing that who will be the tax owner who will be responsible for taxation impact on financial measures so uh, by all these means any by these calculation analysis or structuring we are uh, choosing the best option best fit is a expected period of use for the organization the pricing is uh, again uh, it, it will vary according to the structure we choose so current market condition is actually pricing is secured finance okay, okay nowadays uh, secure financing uh, is uh, in, in place 
which means uh, if somebody is giving something on lease, they are uh, having some security against that, additional security in asset back financing, increased investor appetite for secure transaction and leases as combined with the solely low interest rates to make the secure finance available at extremely aggressive rate. So current, this is just explanation that what is going on in current market uh, condition, what kind of options are available. So mostly they are uh, preferring the secured leasing. Secured leasing means if you are giving some asset on leasing to one organization, so you should have some security here. Covering the risk. Hmm? To cover the risk. To yes. cover the risk. Exactly. Uh, asset uh, and you know uh, the rate also change with this. For example, if my risk is covered, so I can apply the lower interest rate. If my risk is not covered, so high risk, high gain. I will uh, give, uh, then these company can charge high rate because there is no uh, risk coverage and uh, the investors are bearing the high uh, risk. So the other one is asset consideration. Asset characteristics are centrally important to lease pricing, especially to lease structure involving significant residual risk transfer from lesser to lesser. This is what we were saying, the residual risk transfer. Okay, the willingness of lesser to take aggressive residual risk position changes from year to year reflecting industry conditions, sector consideration and changing investors. Preference. So again, this is uh, the uh, the pricing that where uh, the lease company has giving the option that uh, the residual risk can be transferred. Structure preferences. An example of variability of lease pricing in, is that the certain transaction structure may become prohibitively expensive. A certain is a certain business sector, for example, a step payment rent pattern may have a very uh, favorable cash flow impact. That is going on. This is again uh, in the cost of actually improving the prices and availability of fund. Uh, this is again the structure preferences, what kind of structure is uh, offered by the lease, comp lessee, uh, lease company and uh, uh, what kind of structure is uh, required uh, by the lessee and accordingly uh, the proving of additional security enhancement by the lessee may be cost effective in improving pricing and availability of funds. They grow on the pricing basis. Pricing, exactly. This is the, the structure preferences required by the organizations. So it, it has impact on the pricing. So these were the factors which were uh, having impact on the pricing. First is the structure that we choose. The other things other than structure are the market condition, the asset consideration, mm -hmm. uh, and but we, we want to have that risk or no, and then the structure preferences. Uh, comparison. Comparison is uh, again uh, between the lease option or the buy option. So lease option and buy option, uh, the comparison should be done again on the uh, very financial uh, where the basis. Liquidity, cash flow. Cash flow. Yeah. Uh, cash flow plus you know every for business. If I am sole owner. Uh, I have uh, owner of my business, so I have fund and which is um, only for me. I can use it for any purpose, uh, or I can uh, uh, use it for uh, buying the equipment. But if if it is a company, so any investment by the investor is also having some cost, and that is called equity cost. So equity has a cost. If you take the loan, that is having a debt cost. So even you have your own uh, funds uh, that that has cost. So you have to comparison in that well uh, that perspective as well. 
means if you are having the option lease option is uh, less costly you can go by that if you have the the loan option uh, less costly you can go by that and even for example you have your own cash but it is costly than other two options means you you have to pay uh, return so so that that is uh, the again a uh, decision we need to so take in, in pure accounting terms one question here let's say we lease an equipment mm -hmm. which is uh, valued at 1 million we lease it including the profit of the uh, the lesser it is interest rate yeah interest rate it is uh, 1.15 million let's say okay so in our books how will we uh, i mean that should not be an asset it should be a liability right that lease term we have to pay for let's say five years so how do we book that as a liability uh, see uh, if you uh, very simple uh, equation of uh, balance sheet the assets are always equal to uh, equity and liabilities mm -hmm. so one side is asset and other side is equity plus liability yeah. so those both are in other uh, way uh, other side so uh, your question was regarding the sorry i forgot your question the question was that this this equipment that i have procured mm -hmm. in my books will it be an asset or so will it be an asset which one let's say but lease or buy yeah you are talking about lease it's a buy it's an asset buy it's an oh, asset yeah. okay it's a lease is the more asset if it, uh, yeah lease so here that i have for a 16 standard comes yeah. that's why okay <laughs> 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 so your question refers to that standard that standard now uh, which applicable since 2016 mm -hmm. is saying that every lease asset has two component one is the asset side another one is the liability side mm -hmm. the asset is the amount the asset side is that that equipment Mm -hmm. uh, or that item, okay. and the liability side is what you are paying on that. Even in the payment terms of installment, and even in the terms of interest, mm -hmm. so both sided side should be presented on the balance sheet. Now the lease asset is both uh, asset and liability. So the principal as an asset in general cases. Sorry, consider as an asset. So the lease or fine, you find it is become an asset. So leasing it is also an asset. Asset plus liability. Asset so both so sides you have to pay the remaining amount. In yeah. Terms, in terms of so money. you have to uh, this uh, asset. Uh, this standard is actually in the very detail and it is related to finance. So I don't want to mention or I, that's why I skip it in detail. But it says that you have to take all the cost of that lease as an asset and then amortize it. And the other side you have to take the all liability and whatever you are paying is treat as an expense. so this is the uh, details uh, in that uh, standard which which uh, specifying this oh oh both the answer is clear right uh, understood this lease parameters and tax consideration okay this formula can you see the formula okay the, this formula is only for one uh, uh, rate uh, weighted average cost of capital uh, which is also used in the calculation of uh, by this in this okay so thank you sir okay thank you thank you very much okay so, so this this formula is if i explain um, the 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 point i discussed a little bit earlier that equity has also its, its cost so by this way we just calculate the the cost of uh, capital even it is uh, debt or equity so this uh, e represent the market value of equity d is debt again r is cost of equity and R E is cost of equity, R D is cost of debt, and this is tax rate. So this formula calculate that what actually our internal portfolio has the cost, including debt and equity. Yeah, you have the equity, 
and if you have blend of debt so then this give us the the weighted average cost of capital that oh, and the buy and enter the exactly that what cost you under me bear if you go by this this into to purchase the to buy so it is e equity divided by debt plus equity into equity rate cost of equity plus debt over debt plus equity into cost of debt rate one minus tax rate normal tax rate in that country okay break even analysis break even analysis is the analysis where you have to do both analysis one at the side of lease and another on the side of buy uh, buy decision and you should reach to some point where break even you reach to the break even where the, the cost is equal so that will help to to negotiate or to consider the leasing uh, valuation so this uh, any may very minimal up and down can be accepted but if there is big uh, difference yeah, yeah, yeah. so so you have that basis uh, that you have break even point and the lease of it should go around it not too much than difference okay the third session is ended regarding the capex lease versus buy decision uh, there is another session of e invoicing uh, which we will go briefly because it is uh, new uh, in the saudi arabia and uh, um, we are getting the updates uh, because in january uh, december 4 december 2021 it will be go live uh, but currently we all businesses in saudi arabia are in transition rule uh, to to meet the requirement of invoicing so ks it becomes now the part of invoicing revolution some of the countries in the world are already having uh, but now ks is also going through this transition what does it exactly means uh, the zafka department recently published uh, the document which said which announced that we are going for invoicing and what when it is live 4th december 2021 okay and there will be two phases this will be the first phase which will go live on 4th december and another phase will be 1st january 2023 so in first phase there are minimum requirements but those are also technical and in second phase there will be many requirements uh, and everything will go uh, automatic and uh, live but still in phase first uh, many many changes and requirements are to be done for the december 2020 they published that they are going for e invoicing uh, then for december 2021 after one year will it be this project will be live and one uh, january 1 2023 all businesses will be integrated with the zatka department so any transaction or just the vat uh, the tax transaction will be invoice invoicing invoicing all invoicing, all invoicing so but you will do So, it will be linked. Exactly, it will be linked with tax authority. And what will play? I think the type of sales side. There are two two types. One you pay, uh, one you receive. Your receivable and one is your payable. So payable and vice will route through the suppliers to the third authority to you, and your invoices will route through authority to the client. So. Basic requirement of invoicing to be met on this first stage will be to generate the invoices automatically from the system. Not manual, not Excel, not any other format will be accepted. Yes, to be able to share the invoice to the client directly through the channel, online channel store. To yeah. to maintain or archive the record. so these three requirement will be at first stage it doesn't mean that physical invoices will be stopped physical will be there at first stage but uh, i'm sure in in second phase maybe it will be phase 1 generation phase for december supplier will generate the invoice for example we are supplier to our customer who will generate the invoice will share the invoice electronically and buyer will receive it 
we have to store it and gazette authority or our department may come at any time or ask any time the record of your uh, invoicing if we're doing it with server for example we do the invoicing through the system and those are done with us and we store it down no we are doing from system server invoices yes we are doing from system but that some no, we are talking about our system our system internal we should generate this is the, the invoicing from we are doing uh, invoicing on excel time being right is we are submitting the so manual format so it will be the same sorry internal will be the same no it is gazette requirement that we have to uh, automate ourselves yeah, uh, every saying, business yeah what i'm saying that internally we are not doing it now exactly so this is what we are going to do this so is what the, the this is what uh, we are working on it and we have to uh, meet the uh, requirement and that's why we we are on daily basis we are working on sap development and uh, our internal processes are uh, Uh, integrating integrated and uh, updating as per the requirement so we see foresee that challenge and we are preparing ourselves according to the uh, tax authority need uh, phase one generation is, is again uh, person able to generate and store for december generation storage and contain additional fields such as qr code for simplified invoice simplified invoice is again i mention Uh, the panda or bakala invoice or the hotel invoice that is simple they should have barcode and they normally have use of any invoice system complied with jatka requirements generate and store uh, ensure all the requirement fields are included on the issued invoice okay invoice invoice format is already uh, prescribed by the tax court is because earlier all invoices are as per tax so the format the minimum requirement are same for example seller name should be there where registration in first phase where registration number of the seller time stamp of the invoice e invoice or credit debit note amount and vat amount these are the minimum requirement should be there on e invoicing uh, format uh, at the first phase the other phase Additional requirements are hash of XML format. XML format will be available should be available cryptographic stamp. Public key used to generate the cryptographic uh, stamp. Zetka portal uh, uh, cryptographic stamp of the public key. Okay. In second phase, actually, in first phase, simply I will explain. we will be able to generate the invoice we will be able to share the invoice and store it but in second stage the difference will be we will issue the invoice we will send it to tax authority they will approve and verify with the e stamp they will send us back okay. then we will again that's approved document we will save and we will send to the client and then uh, on that approved document basis the payment will be done only we will not be able to send anything to client we will not be able to send any invoice without approval if it is uh, sent the other thought other party has the right to reject or cancel it or not accept it or not pay it even if they have the service or the contracts behind it if they have received the services or received the material but it is not through the approved okay, channel it will be rejected so it is a big challenge for us Uh, that wh wh whatever we issue the invoice should be uh, as per the criteria or the legal requirements plus it should be approved uh, from the gazette and the other challenge is whatever the supplies we are taking from our invoices we will not be able to same like we will not be able to uh, even pay or even to claim the input vat if it is not through the proper channel so it is again the challenge that we have to uh, update our vendors as well okay. so keep an eye on them as well uh, yeah, if they are sleeping the then it is again challenge for us thank you me and then to the proposal <laughs> okay uh, prohibited functions functionalities allowing this is related to it allowing uncontrolled access it is prohibited on the first phase tampering of e invoices or their associated notes or logos logs uh, 
so this should be uh, security uh, point of view it should be secured document yani you are going uh, online we have, the we have the system but it is for all general because some businesses will be small some will, and everybody is going online so it should they should have a sufficient sure. security system that can uh, prevent them uh, for these kind of uh, Amendments or uh, the uncontrolled uh, uh, so access. So it is going to start on December four, huh? Four December twenty twenty one. And and uh, in in our case, uh, like how we are going to make the reversing? How we are going to do it? It will be it will be connected through SAP. Yeah, from SAP. Currently, we normally uh, it should be from SAP, mm -hmm. but. Uh, because of due, due to our complex nature of business and the gap between two points one is the date of supply and another one is the uh, at the client confirmation point so there are two two there is gap which we already discussed with the relevant team and internally we are uh, finding that solution so due to that limitation we were not using uh, the uh, Yeah. Auto invoicing system of SAP, but uh, after this we will not be allowed to do manual. So, but again, it, it has to be through. It has to be through any ERP system. Not for us because we are using SAP, so it should be through SAP. But it is not. Yeah, it, it is not. It is not connected to SAP to the system. Then. Yeah, it is gadget requirement that uh, you can use any ERP system to generate your invoicing. And it should be in sequence numbering, and it should uh, meet the R requirement prescribed in previous slide. Yeah, it's not a generating invoice. It's not a generating invoice. So it is manually right now, right? Oh, manual plus. Uh, yeah, R invoices. Allowing uncontrolled access. Okay, allowing the issuance of multiple invoice sequence. Multiple invoice sequence is, uh, you know, if if. One invoice sequence is starting from one to all, and then other invoice sequence. Uh, uh, you you have multiple sequence number, so it is discouraged here. It is discouraged, like yeah. And it is basic requirement in uh, before even that this invoice. In our scenario, we have three or three business units, like plants and the system and factoring, or say let us suppose Jumbo. So everybody cannot have their own invoice sequence number. one company should have one sequence or something even it it has different branches so this is like all our payments in the air and the cash flow but now we will find some this, solution this this invoicing has to that's what sir yeah we we are this, this invoicing should be through the let's say we are the we are, we are the vendor so it should be through our own ERP system there's no government specified ERP system right or there not uh, currently no, no. Yeah. Currently, there is no uh, government's uh, prescribed yeah. any uh, software, but uh, they have allowed us to use any ERP system which meets these uh, tax authority requirements. What about the small suppliers that we are basically? There are customized applications yeah, uh, in the market. Yeah, uh, people are working. The companies are working on it. The IT companies and the software companies they are working on it. Even uh, we have just today attended the. Uh, workshop from uh, SAP uh, itself uh, company. So uh, they are saying that they are updating their SAP version, and uh, yeah. then it will be available. Even uh, we, uh, if we talk about other uh, implementing companies who are implementing the software, and they are also working uh, how to get the solution. So. So this is even gadget workshop we attended. They have explained us the uh, the steps and uh, guided us how we can move forward. But there is no specified company provided by them or any anything. Yes, in first stage we have to meet these requirements to issue the invoice to generate to share with the client and to store it. And in other step in other process after one year they are saying that they will. Uh, link with their system, i.e., yani the gadget system will be linked with right. the uh, uh, organization system. Just a clarification on this: what we are doing right now for the clients, such as like our, we make the, the invoices and we verify it with them, and we look at it and they approve it and they approve their system. 
now uh, an upcoming uh, time that from, from from December. So we have to do it electronically here. Yes. Then we send it to Iraq. Mm. Yes. yes. And any editing in these things mm. that can be catered with the debit and credit note, which is allowed by okay. the tax so authority. The second phase, which it says it has to go to get, uh, gadgets or uh, exactly the tax uh, authority that and they approve it. They will. Approve. We had anything issues at. Be this is what program. we have to make our structure internally that how we will communicate so this is a call that you should uh, discuss the matters with the clients uh, that how they are going uh, forward we have to agree with, with this change the client, how we can get it done before exactly. we start the exactly. exactly. yes, previously we have to approve our so that. any change will not be allowed in the document but you have to post another document which is debit or credit note to make the, the adjustment uh, so, so things will be more uh, streamlined with the uh, tax authority, but more uh, complicated with the businesses. So we have to keep an eye on the clients as well, what they are doing. Uh, we have to uh, discuss the matters with them. That how he will kill me. He will kill me. He will kill me. Go back to the client. Get us our money. <laughs> uh, we have to so many things changes now. Oh. Okay. Uh, but going back to the previous section, I mean, since I'm from the cost estimation department, mm -hmm. for us, that is very simple. Mm -hmm. We give the price when we are preparing our proposal and the marketing sends it to the client. The proposal or the cost, uh, the quotation is exclusive of that, mm -hmm. of any VAT. Okay, VAT is not included in that cost. The reconciliation is a separate part. So, VAT is very simple for us. Just withholding tax, mm -hmm. now any services we are taking. From any overseas party, it is applicable to all those services only, right? For any material goods that we import, like tubes or any piping, that is a uh, what do you say duty uh, custom custom duties payable on those materials, which we consider as our cost. Okay, but for withholding tax, how do we consider? Because they usually do not mention the withholding tax in their uh, quotation, the, 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 the service organization. So in that case, how will we uh, like? Uh, with order tax is applicable to the vendors. Okay. Uh, it is linked with the supply chain department. Mm -hmm. So if you have any link with the, the vendors in terms of your pricing mm -hmm. uh, of the project, then definitely uh, you should consider that if any services which are uh, taken outside the kingdom, mm -hmm. so you have to consider uh, and uh, many emails and many uh, discussions I have done with the relevant uh, supply, supply chain, chain teams okay. that this is the foreign vendor or foreign company mm -hmm. cost mm -hmm. we should not accept it to bear it ourselves mm -hmm. it is not the com our company cost yeah, so it should be negotiated at the time of uh, the to or the quotation this kind of case comes in very rare, in very rare cases not in every case because mostly we are importing materials it is very simple we are the change the duty. On material with order tax is not applicable, yeah. simple. So, but for services, very rarely we do have some kind of service. Specialized service that we have yeah. to take from outside, yeah. uh, consultations or supervision level from the. Okay. Uh, so, should we make it part of our cost? That, I mean, let's that's what I'm saying. It is not our cost. I know. We I know. should agree. We should agree with the, vendor. That, with the vendor that it is their cost and they have to bear because it is. From the tax authority, that that vendor is coming and taking benefit from Saudi Arabia, and he has to pay the portion of that benefit to the authority. So, so, so hundred percent from hundred to hundred ten percent, we have to impose this cost to the uh, vendor. Understood. In any case, if it is uh, accepted by the management to bear uh, on the okay. internally, then definitely it should be. Since fine. we are doing costing. Uh, Cost estimation that is something which will happen in the future, so we do not go to then the it is then that. it should be added and in the part, we part we of do not ask the vendor to consider the withholding tax, give us another. We don't have time for that. So, for sim to simplify the matter, what we do is we let's say somebody gives us a quotation of a thousand yard, mm. we'll add on top of that withholding tax by ourselves and then we will consider in our cost. Okay. Uh, I will uh, I will uh, tell you the uh, impact of it. It is yes. If we we can uh, normally business are doing this, but you know the impact of this. First, we are charging, uh, uh, yani taking this impact of cost, mm -hmm. 
and then other thing is what benefit we could get from this uh, for example gazette uh, tax authority it discourages this practice so whatever the withholding tax we have deducted uh, from the behalf of um, uh, yeah, right. tax uh, the yeah. foreign party mm -hmm. in our zakat and income tax return which is filed uh, after completion of the tax uh, year yeah. we, can, we can we can deduct it. we can deduct that cost but if we are paying that cost and we are bearing that withholding tax cost internally then gazette first we have taken that cost internally and then gazette disallow that cost from our claim so that is the double loss for us okay. Okay. so so that means when we ask for a quotation from a foreign service vendor we will ask him to add the withholding tax whatever is that he gave us on top of that is cost add but don't disclose it should not be disclosed separately gazette says that uh it should be deducted from their amount of invoice and for an invoice they don't mention the withholding tax or any other thing yeah. they just simply submit the invoice this is the value of their service and then this is the total uh, claimable uh, from us so it is our response. for example if some vendor for an matter he submit the invoice of 1000 real mm -hmm. he should not mention separately that 5 real additional is withholding tax or this one 100 1000 real includes the withholding tax of 5% mm. he didn't mention anything about the tax at all so it's only a billion the money that sells 1000 real yeah it tax authority says that if you are paying 1000 to to the foreign vendor for the services deduct 5% okay. or the percentage so according to the to be like 90 yeah yeah Yeah, yeah, he is yeah, taking yeah, benefit. Yeah. He should add his in his costing, and it should be conveyed properly. But again, Gazette discouraged that it should be de deducted from their uh, uh, we need value of invoice. How we apply through our estimation? Yes. Yes. This, is, this is the question. So this is the main. The question. So that's why I am discouraging this yeah. question. You are saying uh, how we can make it part of our uh, cost. First of all, I am discouraging this practice. The second solution I am giving that. Uh, they should make it part of uh, the invoice, and that is your costing. You should not separately. I, I understand. I understand. But again, if let's say, we for example, your value of service is one thousand, okay. and applicable where the total tax is five percent. So now it is one thousand fifty dollar. So vendor should submit the invoice of one thousand fifty dollar, which is your costing. Oh, okay. So we should tell the vendor that it includes the. But I don't tax. recommend this practice. This yeah, is discouraged. You are asking again and again, and I. So we have a separate. We have to. We have to give all this. We have to. Yeah. This is my 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 uh, emphasis is to charge this to the vendor and educate them and communicate with them. Yeah, it know. is their part. It should be from deduction from one thousand dollars. Yeah, I know. I know. But if you don't tell the vendor. If you don't communicate it to them, yeah, he will say, "I need my one thousand real. Why are you deducting this fifty real from my invoice?" Telling the rule of, uh, of course, he, he see, he is not sitting here in Saudi Arabia. He is not paying any kind of taxation yeah. here in Saudi yeah, Arabia. He will say, "He is know. not. He is not applicable on any kind of uh, rent or any kind of." Uh, Uh, the the cost which yeah, is but incurred, he, but he is taking the full benefit from the Saudi Arabia. So yeah, yeah. that's what the, the authority says that the the percentage of tax should be deducted from on also from people. his from his own place. They have their own rules. They have their own rules, but they can claim from they can claim this taxation paid here. They can claim from their own country. Okay. So educate them properly that whatever you will pay here as the total tax, you can claim from their income tax return. Okay. From their, their so from so their many clients are asking. We educated them, uh, and many clients are now asking the 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 total tax payment certificates. We are giving them, and they are claiming from their uh, okay. own uh, yes, countries. Yes, so this is the right solution. We have to so this means this means we do not consider it in our cost at all. And we should first we like train them. We should first decide with them because if additionally it comes, so the costing will be deserved. So we should so first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We will uh, have a discussion on this. Okay. okay. Same for Thank any. You. This withholding tax is not uh, deductible from the VAT. We cannot claim that we paid fifty dollars withholding tax. 
and when you are paying VAT on that particular project for the total invoice, you cannot uh, claim this 50 real from the total VAT. Right? VAT is different and without tax yeah. is different. So it is not. It's so both, both returns are different. Both submissions are different. Okay. Okay. Monthly we submit VAT return separately. Like monthly we return without tax separately. Okay. Exactly. And their applicability, their time frame, their submission, their They're payment separate totally processes. are different. Okay. Yeah. So it does not have any link with the VAT. And, 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 both, intent to ask and both are not return that. adjustable. Mm -hmm. Both are separate. To be double was a sometimes. For the VAT we don't need anything, but for this withholding tax and for the capex lease versus buy, we will have a discussion with you. No I will include some more people from my team as well. No, no problem, no problem. Sir, Welcome sir, anytime. Sir, Thank sir, you very much. Sir, costing, very costing it was uh, a not expected as much uh, <laughs> session, but, but this happened with me as well. When I gave my training session, uh, actually it was planned for two and a half hours. It went on to four hours. So I am not sure this whole information was helpful for you. But guys. Very helpful. Very That's why I got discussing with you because there is something yeah. that we need to know how to yeah. utilize thank it as well. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. So okay. appreciate it. Thank you for your attendance. And we will have another discussion later on. Thank you. Thank you very much.